Joining me this morning to talk a little bit about a new bipartisan piece of legislation that he is sponsoring in the Capitol to try to deal with some of the abandoned wells in the West. Uh, the newest senator from the state of New Mexico, Ben Ray Lujan, is joining me from Washington, D.C. And Senator Lujan, it's great to have you back with me on KSJE. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Always an honor to join you, Scott. Thanks for having me today. Well, thank you. And this is the first time I think we've spoken since you've moved across the hall to the Senate chamber. So congratulations. I appreciate that, sir. It's really been an incredible honor to uh, work on behalf of people all across New Mexico in the U.S. House of Representatives and to continue that work now as one of the newest senators uh, elected uh, across the country representing New Mexico. Well, very good. Well, let's talk a little bit about this piece of legislation that uh, you are, are co-sponsoring along with one of your Republican colleagues called the Regrow Act. And as I mentioned, it deals with some of these abandoned wells uh, in the West with some money to try to um, cap these wells and I guess take, take care of these wells that are just kind of sitting around on, on private and public land, correct? That's absolutely correct, Scott. So the goal here was to uh, be able to not just introduce a bipartisan piece of legislation. I'm very grateful to the work that Senator Kramer is doing here, um, and it's been fun to partner with him. Um, this builds on work that I was a part of with the New Mexico delegation, uh, being led by Congresswoman Sochi Torres Small from the Southern Congressional District in New Mexico, uh, that we were able to include in a piece of legislation that was our infrastructure package that passed the House but unfortunately was not included uh, for adoption in the Senate. Um, and now uh, I'm very proud of the fact that President Biden has included uh, resources and funding to plug abandoned oil and gas wells, 56,600 known documented orphaned wells across the country. And that's what Senator Kramer and I are targeting in this package. So bipartisan support this passed the House of Representatives in the previous Congress, President Biden has included it in his request, and, and now you have a bipartisan approach to get it done. So really excited uh, to find that partnership, and uh, we'll continue advocating until we get this across the finish line. Very good. Now, and this is, um, it has a lot of money in it, and it's it, the idea is to provide for jobs in many of these places, right, to, to do this work and to, to clean up these abandoned wells. That's, that's part of this legislation, correct? That's correct. So it's estimated to... Uh, create as many as 13,500 jobs uh, towards that. Again, the 56,600 known documented orphaned oil and gas wells across the country, including right in New Mexico. Uh, these are high skilled technical jobs. So I'm really excited about what that means and growing this workforce um, and creating job opportunities right in New Mexico. Uh, an important part of the infrastructure package, uh, recognizing the importance and urgency to be able to plug these uh, orphaned wells. And there's environmental concerns, aren't there, about these wells that, that aren't being um, capped in some way or being taken care of and are just kind of languishing out on lands, both public, private, and tribal, we should mention, too. Most well, certainly. These should have never been abandoned and orphaned, Scott. Um, it, it's also why there's an important conversation taking place in the state of New Mexico around bonding uh, to make sure that we never see an addition to this problem. Uh, but right now, this will provide the resources necessary to be able to go in and plug uh, these orphaned oil and gas wells. And to your point of the question, um, especially with the emissions, the pollution that is being emitted uh, from those uh, orphaned oil and gas wells. And as you know, this is one of the contributing factors to New Mexico having the worst methane emissions in the country, even though we're not the number one oil and gas producer in the United States. Um, so there are environmental benefits here, there are health benefits, and there are also positive economic benefits with job creation. Indeed. And again, the mention that this is a bipartisan effort, um, your colleague, the senator from uh, North Dakota, is also co-sponsoring this piece of legislation. What are your uh, opinions, I guess, of the chances of passage um, in this Congress? I think it's very likely that you will see the House and Senate come together and send an infrastructure package to the president which will include financial resources to plug uh, orphaned and uh, abandoned oil and gas wells. Very good. Well, we will keep uh, everyone posted on that, Senator Lujan. And let me ask you a little bit about energy, because as you know, our audience is here in northwest New Mexico, certainly can understand the need for dealing with these abandoned and orphaned wells, but I know they're also concerned about 
um, maybe the Biden's administration's pause on leasing of federal lands for future um, oil and gas development. And can you give us your thoughts on on that? Is that something that the administration is is looking at, maybe lifting soon? I know folks here are concerned about that. Well, as you may know, Scott, Senator Heinrich and I, we weighed in on this issue early on after it was announced that there would be a moratorium, a pause uh, to review the policies that were put in place by President Trump's administration to be reviewed by President Biden's administration. Um, and what we raised was that there needed to be certainty uh, for the community as far as the timing of this, that uh, we needed to have public comment and public involvement from stakeholders uh, back in New Mexico. And as of, uh, my gosh, I don't know when they, they recently responded to us, but the date was not extended, as you know, for the moratorium that was put in place by the Biden administration. And that's something that we've been sharing with people back in New Mexico. Um, and so right now, the Department of Interior under Secretary Deb Holland, a fellow New Mexican, the first Native American to be a secretary um, and be confirmed uh, to serve in any presidential administration. And in this case, a uh, first woman Native American as well, um, that the Department of Interior will continue doing that important work and uh, resuming the reviews um, as uh, it was prior to that, uh, before the moratorium was put in place. Understood. And it seems like though it puts um, new Secretary Holland into kind of a delicate situation of uh, dealing with her former constituents in, in New Mexico, a very energy um, dependent state and energy producing state with some of these other uh, messages and directives coming from the White House. I don't know that it puts her in, in any kind of a situation. Um, what I would say is I know that Secretary Holland uh, is the right person for the job. She's well prepared. She's thoughtful. She's a good listener. Um, and she's assembled an incredible team over at the Department of Interior. Um, so I'm excited about the work she'll be doing and was very uh, proud to be part of an effort to welcome her to New Mexico for one of her first visits, which was at the Pueblo Cultural Center um, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Indeed. Well, and we, we're certainly all very uh, excited to see her work being done at the Interior Department, and again, it's a it's a it's a great step for Native Americans and and women, of course, and especially Native women uh, to see her in that in that job. Let me bounce back just a bit to the uh, the Regrow Act that we mentioned earlier, and as part of this big infrastructure bill that is working its way through Congress, and of course, it's just one part of that. Uh, but other parts of this bill, um, Senator Lujan, would certainly help a lot of cities and towns in in New Mexico. Right? There's a lot of money in in there to help with roads and bridges and, and all the things we think about when we think about infrastructure, correct? Absolutely. Um, the goal here as laid out by the Biden administration, and you can look at the Moving Forward Act, which I was proud to be a part of in the previous Congress that passed out of the House of Representatives, that really builds a foundation to pass an infrastructure package in the United States. Um, as presented, this infrastructure package would be the most robust uh, package for infrastructure investment in the history of the United States of America, roads, bridges, water, wastewater, eliminating the lack of high-speed uh, internet access in our community, something that I've been working on, and I'm also now the chair of the subcommittee that has jurisdiction over the Federal Communication Commission, as well as broadband connectivity uh, across America. Um, but also looking at school modernization and housing, um, I'm really excited about what this means to our communities, and that's why we're working every day to get more and more input across New Mexico and make sure that New Mexico's voices are going to be lifted up and well represented in this important infrastructure package. Indeed. And I know, again, many folks watching us this morning, listening to us this morning, would be wondering how we can pay for, for that. I think we can all agree that maybe infrastructure repairs and improvements are needed, broadband availability and access is, is needed, but it comes at a cost, right? And how do we pay for it? Well, what the Biden administration has suggested is that back in 2017, there was a package that was adopted uh, under President Donald Trump that promised to cut taxes for middle-class families across America, but it, it did not. It never delivered on that promise. What it did is a, a package that cost north of $2 trillion provided tax relief. 80% of the benefit went to the 1% most wealthy people in America. Um, so billionaires did pretty well. Um, and just to measure, if you were making a million dollars a year, this meant a $51,000 tax cut to you every year that that tax package is put in place. 
Um, you compare that to the American Rescue Plan, which we just adopted, which provided tax relief to um, families that are aspiring to get into the middle class and those that are middle class, hardworking families, working with the child tax credit, which provides that full benefit for working families. And so that's one area to, to look at with what can be done with making sure that tax policies are gonna help hardworking families across America, middle class families that need that support. But we also know that America's infrastructure has been crumbling. Driving an investment and creating job opportunities and supporting our economy um, and spurring that investment across the country is something that's desperately needed for us to maintain our competitive advantage with the rest of the world. Um, and that's why there are going to be ideas that are put on the table to see what is needed to be able to get this package funded and make sure that we can drive these investments uh, in a historical way. And in a way that's going to make a positive difference in every city, small town across New Mexico as well. Very good. Well, Senator Lujan, we always appreciate your time that you spend with us. I want to ask you one final question with your move over to the Senate. Um, can you give us some idea of some of the perks? I know you're not having to worry about re-election every two years, and it looks like you've got a pretty nice, maybe newer office, better parking space, or what are some of the perks of being in the Senate? Uh, well, you look, it, it's a smaller body, so you get to know people quicker. Um, Senator Udall gave me some incredible advice uh, where it was, you know, you get to know every one of your other colleagues, get to know the other 99 members. Um, you may not always agree with one another, but you try to find that common ground. And that's something that I've really taken to heart. I've appreciated every member that I've gotten a chance to get to know. Um, and look, I, you know, the, the, the office is pretty incredible. I never imagined I'd have a chance to serve in the United States Senate. It's a little smaller than the office that we had in the House. And uh, I do a lot of walking. So, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, being able to get my shoes back to New Mexico and fix the soles where I can. And, uh, you know, putting those... Uh, uh, old Converse on and see what we can do to break them in uh, even a little bit more and get some more wear and tear in them. Uh, but it's just an incredible honor to serve here. I walk by uh, one of New Mexico's two statues um, almost on a daily basis. Uh, it's a statue that is of Senator Dennis Chavez, um, one of New Mexico's first United States senators, the first uh, Hispanic American born uh, United States senator to serve in the United States Senate. He was known as El Senador. Um, Dennis Chavez was responsible for the investments in Cannon Air Force Base in bringing that to New Mexico, Sandia National Labs, the investments that he drove up and around Los Alamos. You know, uh, Senator Dennis Chavez does not get the credit that he deserves for these important staples that are in New Mexico. He also uh, wrote um, what is now Title Seven of the uh, Civil Rights Act as well that is an important part of the protections of our rights in America, um, one of our very own out of New Mexico. Um, and so it, it's those kind of privileges and reminders that I have every day, sir, um, that remind me what's at stake here. And there's so much more for us to do back in New Mexico. Um, but what an incredible uh, body to be a part of, um, but only if we can deliver for the people of New Mexico will it make a difference. And that's something that I'm up to that challenge every day. Well, thank you for reminding us about those great uh, precursors to, to you serving in the Senate, of course, and a lot of history in those halls at the U.S. Capitol. Uh, Senator Lujan, I always appreciate your time. Again, thank you very much. Well, certainly. Always an honor, sir, and appreciate everyone that's tuning in and look forward to following up, Scott. All right. Very good. Take care, and thanks again. Take care, sir. All my best.